Hey friends, welcome back for chapter number three. Today we are going to read about Mr. Willy Wonka and the Indian Prince. If you remember from chapter two, um, the Grandpa Joe and the four grandparents were telling stories to Charlie at nighttime about Mr. Wonka's factory, and now they're gonna tell him a story about Mr. Wonka and this Indian Prince and what happened. All right, let's listen. Chapter 3, Mr. Wonka and the Indian Prince. Prince Pondicherry wrote a letter to Mr. Willy Wonka, said Grandpa Joe, and asked him to come all the way out to India to build him a colossal palace entirely out of chocolate. Can you imagine that? A giant palace or castle made out of chocolate? Did Mr. Wonka do it, Grandpa? He did indeed, and what a palace it was. It had 100 rooms, and everything was made of either dark or light chocolate. The bricks were chocolate, and the cement holding them together was chocolate. And the windows were chocolate, and all the walls and ceilings were made of chocolate. So were the carpets, and the pictures, and the furnitures, and the beds. And when you turned on the taps in the bathroom, Hot chocolate came pouring out. When it was all finished, Mr. Wonka said to the Prince Pondicherry, I warn you though, it won't last very long, so you better start eating it right away. Nonsense, shouted the Prince. I'm not going to eat my palace. I'm not even going to nibble the staircase or lick the walls. I'm going to live in it. But Mr. Wonka was right, of course, because soon after this, there came a very hot day with a boiling sun, and the whole palace began to melt, and then it sank slowly to the ground, and the crazy prince, who was dozing in the living room at the time, woke up to find himself swimming around in a huge brown sticky lake of chocolate. Little Charlie sat very still on the edge of the bed, staring at his grandfather. Charlie's face was bright, and his eyes were stretched so wide you could see the whites all around. Is all of this really true? He asked. Or are you pulling my leg? It's true, cried all the four old people at once. Of course it's true. Ask anyone you like. And I'll tell you something else that's true, said Grandpa Joe. And now he leaned closer to Charlie and lowered his voice in a soft secret whisper. Nobody ever comes out. Out of where? asked Charlie. And nobody ever goes in. In where? cried Charlie. Wonka's factory, of course. Grandpa, what do you mean? I mean workers, Charlie. Workers? All factories, said Grandpa Joe, have workers streaming in and out of the gates in the mornings and the evenings, except Wonka's. Have you ever seen a single person going into that place or coming out? Little Charlie looked slowly around at each of the four old faces, one after another, and they all looked back at him. They were friendly, smiling faces, but they were also quite serious. There was no sign of joking or leg pulling on any of them. Well, have you? asked Grandpa Joe. I... I really don't know, Grandpa, Charlie stammered. Whenever I walk past the factory, the gates seem to be closed. Exactly, said Grandpa Joe. But there must be people working there. Not people, Charlie. Not ordinary people, anyway. Then who, cried Charlie. Aha, that's it, you see. That's another of Mr. Willy Wonka's cleverness. Charlie, dear, 
Mrs. Bucket called from where she was standing by the door. It's time for bed. That's enough for tonight. But mother, I must hear tomorrow, my darling. That's right, said Grandpa Joe. I'll tell you the rest of it tomorrow evening. Hmm, interesting. So that's the end of chapter three. And again, they leave you on a big cliffhanger. Grandpa Joe just explained to Charlie about some secret workers that are working at the factory. And tomorrow he's going to tell them all about them. All right. Thanks for listening. We'll see you back for chapter four tomorrow.